Johnny here with TMZ. Thanks for watching. I have with me John Weinschenk. He is the CEO of application security company Senzik. John, welcome to the show. Thank you. So I thought we'd uh, start off the conversation talking about uh, just the enormous number of data breaches that have taken place lately. I believe it was uh, Yahoo that had an SQL injection attack uh, just last week, and thousands, hundreds of thousands of passwords were uh, posted on the web, and we got to see which were the most common passwords, things like one, two, three, four, five, six, and <laughs> password, and things like that. And I, we saw the top, top 10 list of popularity of passwords. I wanted to ask you, why is it so difficult to secure data, and, and what can we do about it? Well, I think one of the challenges is that uh, it's big data. So there's a large database that's back there, and companies then let people access that information. But all of our information is stored together. And so when you make queries, you make, uh, you're asking for your information to come from that website, you're, you're making a request. And that's normal. When you make a normal request, you get your information. Well, unfortunately, hackers don't do that. Hackers create strings that basically confuse the application, confuse the database. And when they make that confusion on the database, the database doesn't know what to do. It says, oh, is this what you're looking for? And it gives you your information plus everyone else's information with that. And that's exactly what happened with the SQL attacks that took place, is that hackers went in there, did some things they shouldn't have, made some queries to the, app, to the site itself, and the site gave up that information. One of the things that you have to do when you program applications is you need to test those to make sure that when people make um, you know, not normal requests, that those requests get rejected and basically don't even get processed to the back-end data systems. And, and that, un unfortunately, didn't happen in that case. Now, were you describing an SQL injection attack in that case? Yeah, in that case, it's SQL. But there's lots of different attacks that take place out there. So um, we, you know, we test for about 130 categories of attacks that take place. And whether it's privilege escalation, logging into someone's site, logging into a site to look at your account, and then trying to escalate to a super user or someone else's accounts, there's just a lot of different ways that you can actually manipulate a website to go steal information. So what needs to happen is uh, application developers need to test and constantly test, right? Test, 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 and retest because there will be new ways to break into software. And is it uh, the case that your uh, solution suite evolves with new sorts of a new battery of tests over time? So they need to upgrade and keep on hammering their software to make sure that it's secure? Yeah, that's exactly what happens. So, so there's really, it's a development life cycle. So the first part of it is you develop the application at the very beginning, and at that point you need to test it and make sure it's secure. And at that point, that's based off of all the information and knowledge we have at that period of time, that day. And then every single week we come out with new library updates. Now once an application gets developed and gets put in production, it's a different organization, a different team that's now responsible for that. And that production organization that's running the network needs to make sure that that application stays secure and persistently tests it. Just like you do antivirus on your desktop, you need to test your applications once a week or once a month or once a quarter, depending on how much risk you're willing to take. Well, also I would imagine as you update, right? Because you're going to have updates to your software. Absolutely. And then what about uh, the challenges that every company faces with uh, patches to their operating system and patches to their other sorts of software that they have running? Uh, a lot of times you'll have a patch that may open up a vulnerability that you weren't aware of. How do you deal with that sort of issue? Yeah, so the thing that's complicated when you look at web applications is they sit on top of a computer and a computer has an operating system, so that needs to be patched properly. And then they sit on top of a web server, either a, you know IS or an Apache type server, and that needs to be patched properly. And then you have your custom code that you wrote, which is the application itself, and that needs to be tested. So we look at it as it's a holistic attack. What we do is we look and assess the application that sits on that hardware. So we're looking pretty much at the application for vulnerabilities as well as the infrastructure as well as the, the desktop systems. So we go up and down that stack. Now, uh, once a company becomes your customer and uses your battery of uh, tests and, and applies it to their applications, what is the vulnerability level uh, of their system. In other words, can they predict with any certainty is it 99%, 95%? How does that work? So it's, it's complicated in the fact that what we'll do is we'll give you a risk score. So we'll tell you how you match up to other people at test applications with the number of vulnerabilities. But the thing that you can predict is just because you're susceptible and you have a vulnerability in your application that's online, it doesn't mean you're going to be hacked. You actually have to have someone that determines that they're going to hack your site and happens to do the attack that you're susceptible to. So it's a little like playing the reverse lottery here. I mean, there's companies out there that have applications sitting on the internet that are insecure, but they just haven't been exposed yet. And when the hacker gets around or the hacker community gets around and targets your application, <clears throat> the question is how long can you defend yourself before they steal your information?
Now, what about something like a distributed denial of service attack? Is there a, a way that companies can protect themselves? Yeah, so, so we don't really focus on denial of service because that's more of a networking type uh, aspect of it. So that's having you know, dial tone to the application. What we focus on is that there is dial tone to that application. I can get to it, and now I'm going to start manipulating the application and take information to that, to that. Because denial of service doesn't allow you to get to the whole database, right? And what we're seeing in the press a lot is people stealing large, you know, like you said, you know, millions of user records or passwords or social security numbers or credit cards. And that has a high, much higher value sure. than shutting a site sure. down for a couple hours. So uh, based on your experience, uh, what are the biggest mistakes that companies make uh, when it comes to security? Or when, when you get to a site and you, you see or you get to a company and you see what they're doing, can you detail some of those? Yeah, so the, the most, um, so we, we just did a research report that's on our website actually at uh, sensic.com and we just uh, looked at what are the most common vulnerabilities that people are writing into their applications. And we compared it to what we found 10 years ago when we started the company. And we find that it's the same vulnerabilities. It's the thing that you just saw with Yahoo. It's the SQL disclosure. It's cross-site scripting. It's buffer overflow. It's um, privilege escalation. Those are the most common mistakes that we see developers continuing to write. And you might ask, well, why is that? And we actually believe that a lot of it's because we outsource a lot of application development. The developers that are doing that is all about cost, and so they have relatively uh, not a lot of years of experience. They just come out of school. And our institutions are not teaching people, or these kids, how to write secure code. But they write code. So form, fit, and function, it works. But unfortunately, it's insecure. So that really necessitates that um, every company that has web apps or any kind of apps really should be focusing on testing to make sure that their apps, especially if they have valuable data, make sure that their apps are secure. Yeah, if you care about not being in the press and if you have valuable data and you want to protect your customer's information or you have regulations that you need to comply with, you have no choice. You need to test. But a lot of people just test when they first develop and don't actually do that when they, uh, on a persistent basis. And that's a bigger risk because the more it sits on the internet, the more years and days it's up there without being retested, the more vulnerable you can be. Thanks, John. Thanks for being here. Hey, I appreciate it. Great. Thanks.